Welcome in, and welcome to Chapter 3. In this part, we're going to cover the introduction to the neuron. Who wants to learn some biology? So what we're going to do here is just basically introduce the neuron, which is our key player, as we discuss our different nervous system cells. All right, so let's get into it. There are essentially two cells you need to know in terms of the nervous system. Those cells are the neurons. The way you can think of a neuron, it's the basic cell of the nervous system. And you can kind of see them here in the diagram. Their essential job is that they're messengers. So they like to transmit message, messages throughout the body using electrochemical impulses. Keep in mind, 225 miles per hour this happens. And our second cell are the glia cells which are, the way I kind of think of glia cells, they're nurse cells. What I mean by that is they take care of the neurons to make sure they're functioning. For example, they remove waste products, they insulate them to make them fire more efficiently. In other words, they take care of the neurons to make sure they're up and running. So of course our key players are the neurons there. All right, so what we're gonna do next is sort of get into the inner workings of the neuron and explain the basic parts here. By the way, before we get into that, I want to show you where these neurons are distributed throughout the central nervous system, i.e. the brain and spinal cord. So we're in our cerebral cortex here, our master part of the brain. There's about 12 to 15 billion neurons. In the cerebellum, a hindbrain structure, there's about 70 billion neurons. Cerebellum helps us control things like balance, coordination, etc. And our spinal cord, which is kind of like an extension of the brain stem, contains about 1 billion neurons. So it just sort of demonstrates where these neurons are distributed throughout the central nervous system. So what I'm going to cover next are the basic parts of the neuron. There are three. We have what's called the cell body. Pretty self-explanatory here. It's the body of the cell. But more importantly, it houses the nucleus of the cell. Our next basic part is called a dendrite, which is Greek for tree. And so these guys are branching structures that receive information. So they look like little tree branches located more towards the head of the neuron. And their major function is that they receive incoming messages. So it's the part of the neuron that receives messages. Our last basic part is called an axon. The way I want you to think of an axon, it's like the tail of the neuron. In other words, it's a single, long, thin, straight fiber. We're going to find that there's branches at its tip. And more importantly, it sends information to the next neuron. So neurons are lined up in these extensive networks or chains, and they communicate with each other, once again, through electrical chemical impulses. We'll get into that stuff later. And they like to communicate with each other. So those are our three basic parts. Let's take a look here just to kind of review as we go to our next slide. So here's a crude diagram of a neuron. Keep in mind there are several types of neurons with different shapes and functions. We're going to keep it simple here and just go over our basic form. So once again, we have our cell body which has the nucleus. We said that towards the head, if you will, are these branching structures known as dendrites. That's where the neuron receives information. And then a signal is sent down our axon, which is like this tail region, where it would then communicate with the next neuron in the chain. Notice on the axon, there's this wrapping material known as the myelin sheath and that is an insulating factor which allows the neuron to transmit more efficiently so the glia cells are involved in that 
And that myelin sheath we know is important, it's like a coating. And what it does is it insulates the neuron to make them fire more efficiently. So our strongest neurons have a really thick coat of that, as it turns out. All right, finally what we're going to do in this short lecture is explain the two types of messages sent by neurons. So essentially there are two. The first one is called excitatory. What we mean here, when an excitatory message is sent by a neuron, it's increasing the chance that the message will be sent to where it needs to go. In other words, it's exciting the neuron. That's an easy way to think of it. An example of that would be pain. Let's say you're, you stub your toe. That information travels up your leg, through your spine, to reach the pain part of the brain, where you would then detect that uncomfortable sensation. So in other words, pain is an excitatory type message and obviously as humans it's important to know when we're injured so our nervous system is ensuring that that message will be received by the brain. Our second type of message is called inhibitory. So if you think of what the word inhibit means, this should be pretty easy to understand. In this particular case, the neuron is decreasing the chance that the message will be sent. So in this case, our body is trying to shut it down or to inhibit the release of chemicals, for example, to stop or block a message. So running with our pain theme, an inhibitory message would be sent uh, to stop pain signals. You know, an example of that would be when the body secretes endorphins or natural painkillers to inhibit pain signals. In other words, our body may be trying to prevent the experience of pain for various reasons and is trying to inhibit that sensation, uh, in other words, stopping it from going to the brain. So inhibitory, once again, just kind of means that it's shutting down the message and stopping it from being sent down the line. All right, so this concludes our short lecture on the introduction to the neuron. Please proceed to the next video or audiovisual lecture in the progression.